And if you are doing something, don't think about how much money you know, you're making or how much money you're going to make. The important thing is, once you are doing something, make sure you are focused. Once you start building something, make sure that you finish it. The whole world is coming to Africa. Look at what is happening in the last, you know, uh, 10 years or so. You know, that is because of the resources that we have. We really need to harness, you know, what we have here in Africa. We have the resources. We have the oil and gas, we have iron ore, we have limestone, we have bauxite, we have copper, we have coal, we have, we have everything. So if you open up Africa, you know, I mean, the sky will be the limit for us. On the Hall of Fame of the African Lions and Lionesses, the men and women who we appreciate on this channel for the work they are doing on the African continent, we always reserve a special place for the African businessmen and women who are busy creating jobs so that the African youth can find something to do and also so that they can inspire other African youth who want to start their businesses and be able to grow. Of course, we would not do justice if we don't profile the billionaire businessman of Nigeria, Abdul Samad Rabiu, who happens to be worth about $3.2 billion at the time of filming this video, who has made his money by taking his family-owned business and chattering it to greater heights. Abdul Samad has made a lot of money in Nigeria trading the basic commodities that are almost aligned to what Alin Kodankote, Africa's richest man, has traded. This includes sugar and cement. There has to be something about sugar and cement. And if you ever get an opportunity to trade something, I think you guys should try and look at this. Of course, if you study history enough, you would know that lots of wars were fought because of sugar and many other spices. I think cement was not yet there. But as you realize, all the construction that is being done on the African continent will require a lot of cement for us to be able to transform our cities into what we all envision Africa to be in 10, 20, and 50 years. And definitely, of course, as our population increases, as we have all these youths rising up, starting their own businesses, getting their jobs, and starting their own families, they are going to have more families that require a lot of food and as part of this food we shall need lots and lots of sugar and this is where this gentleman we are profiling today gets his billions of dollars from and of course we shall not waste a lot of time dilly dallying around we shall go straight into his top 10 rules for success beginning with rule number one remain focused if you are doing something don't think about how much money you know, you're making or how much money you're going to make. The important thing is, once you are doing something, make sure you are focused. Once you start building something, make sure that you finish it. There are challenges in Nigeria, there are challenges in Africa, and nothing comes easy. More so in uh, a place like Nigeria, where you have all sorts of issues, you know, infrastructure, challenges with, you know, regulations, government, and what have you. But if you are really focused and, you know, you keep working very hard, you know, you'll be able to sort out most of the issues. Again, you know, there is no business, good business in Nigeria or anywhere that, you know, actually, you know, comes easy. So sometimes you have a lot of issues, a lot of failures. But then again, you know, you keep learning what we have in this country in terms of resources, you know, in terms of potentials, you know. I tell you, I don't think there's any country that, you know, would have the kind of thing that we have in Nigeria. Rule number two, the African continental free trade area will benefit Africans more than anybody. You know, the benefits are, are immense, you know, for, for the continent, you know, for the private sector, for the people. Because if you look at it, you see that Africa is the last frontier. The whole world is coming to Africa. The whole world is looking to come to Africa. In the last 10 years alone, over 320 embassies have opened their doors in Africa, Africa is important and becoming more so, not least because of the, you know, of Africa's growing population, you know, uh, you know, of, of, of the world. You know, it is predicted that by 2025 now, Africa is going to be, you know, the biggest in terms of population. There will be more Africans than the Chinese people by the 2020, and by the, the Indians as well. by the year 2025. I mean, the Indians, the Chinese are more than the Indians. So we're saying that we're going to be more, more Africans than the Chinese people. So that means, you know, more than the Indians. So because of that, everybody's coming here. 
Therefore, if we are able to integrate, we are able to open up the continent, the opportunities that are there would be a lot more than what we are even seeing now. So it is very, very important and we, you know, um, we, we stand to benefit more than, more than anybody. Rule number three, the private sector can help a lot by creating jobs. Well, I think, you know, the most important thing is for us to try as much as possible to create employment. We really need to do that because if you look at, you know, countries like China, China has done it. China in the last, since, you know, the start of the, you know, economic reform has pulled out over 800 million people out of poverty. India is doing the same thing. India between 2006 and 2016 has pulled out, you know, over 250 million people out of poverty poverty. India today has got, you know, only maybe 28% of its population as poor people and extreme poor, uh, poor because extreme poverty, as we all know, is a dollar ninety cents, you know, uh, per day or less. So we really need to do a lot more of that. And by doing so, I think, you know, it will greatly help the situation. And one way of doing that, I believe, is actually to try as much as possible to encourage ag agriculture. You know, that is what India is doing. If you look at what is happening in uh, Paradise State, you know, I mean, I was also yesterday on a panel with, you know, uh, Nath, Kamal Nath, who is the chief minister of Paradise, and his state has 75 million people in India. And out of that 75 million people, 70% of the population there are farmers directly or indirectly you know so i think we need to do that because with that then we'd be able to at least you know maybe try as much as possible to pull out a lot of people out of poverty unfortunately my my country nigeria today you know holds you know the position of you know having the poorest people in the whole world in terms of percentage you know india had that nigeria today so we really need to do more i'm pleased though to say that the country is doing or the administration you know that we have today is doing uh, you know a lot to try and improve you know on agriculture and i think that is partly you know the way to go rule number four african business conferences will go a long way in enhancing deal flow on the african continent that is another, you know, uh, good development because what I'm seeing is that, you know, if you look at, you know, the uh, AFDB conference in Joburg, you know, two weeks ago, you know, uh, there were deals of probably, I understand, over $40 billion, you know, achieved, you know, just within the day room. So I think what is happening is that because, you know, it is quite challenging, you know, for people to try and get all these, you know, uh, DFIs, you know, different DFIs, you know, to do deals, you know, in different parts of Africa. So when they have this kind of arrangement where you have, you know, DFIs, businesses, you know, leaders, you can all sit down and make deals, arrange deals, and in fact, even sign deals within a very short period of time. So I think it's a good thing. I have seen quite a lot of that, you know, happening in the last, you know, few, actually few months. You know, we saw AFDB in Joburg. You know, there was the CEO Africa Forum also. And of course, there is this. So we look forward to, you know, actually seeing what is going to happen here. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of deals also could be achieved, you know, during this conference. So I think it's a good development. Rule number five, the leaders of the private sector in Africa, the African CEOs and managing directors should periodically come together to brainstorm and figure out the ways to which to take our private markets forward. I think it is important simply, you know, because uh, this is a firm that I've seen that has brought together so many CEOs, you know, from all parts of Africa, over 1,600, you know, participants and some African leaders. I think this is very important. We need to do or to be doing more of this because we don't have this kind of event anywhere in Africa. And I'm very, very impressed because by the time you have, you know, by the time you have so many people from all over Africa, you know, uh, putting heads together, I think will achieve quite a lot. Rule number six, infrastructure investments are critical for Africa's growth. Uh, Nigeria is a very interesting country because, as we all know, it's the biggest, you know, economy and is in a big market. And as it is today, we still have quite a lot to do. And of course, you know, there are quite a lot of opportunities in outside Nigeria. But 
I think if I can talk on the issue of infrastructure that you just mentioned, you know, I think it is key, you know, for us to actually, you know, have this, you know, because the governments, private sector, you know, policy makers, decision makers must all come together, especially also with the DFIs, you know, to try and improve on the infrastructure in Africa, because really we need to do quite a lot. I mean, if you look at the Trans-African Highway, which was envisioned, you know, way back in the 70s, nothing has really been achieved. Yeah. And this is something that I think the private sector can actually, you know, assist, you know, by sitting down and see how we can, as Mrs. Wari said, see how we can partner with the governments and DFIs. Look at, you know, you know, other countries. Everybody is doing, you know, quite a lot of things are happening all over the world. Africa needs to move on. We can actually start even with this Trans-African Highway. There are about nine highways. I mean, think of Lagos, Mombasa, you know, the Highway 8, you know, which is something that I think, you know, if we can get, you know, construction companies and cement manufacturers, steel companies from Africa, you know, sit down and talk to them and see what we can do. I'm sure quite a number of us would be more than willing to actually partner. Rule number seven, state and local governments are critical in supporting entrepreneurs and their respective businesses. I must say, however, that this project would not have been possible without the effort by the President Mahmoud Buhari led administration to put deliberate policies in place to support key industries in the real sector, from agriculture to mining. Through these policies, the CBN provided enough foreign exchange for heavy machinery to come in, and this helped in completing this project on schedule. I therefore want to commend the administration for the policy because without that, maybe it may not have been possible to commission the plant. Mr. Vice President, sir, let me add that what we have done here is a pointer to the fact that Nigeria is ready for business with the right policies and right enabling environment. My speech will be incomplete if I do not acknowledge our host community, Kalambaina where we have chosen to site this plant. It has already been an atmosphere of peace, collaboration, and forward-thinking partnership between us, the Kalambani people, and the people of Sokoto State. And it is my prayer that this mutually beneficial relationship will remain for a very long time. Rule number eight, and something that you should always remember, the sky is the limit for Africa. The whole world is coming to Africa. Look at what is happening in the last, you know, uh, 10 years or so. You know, that is because of the resources that we have. We really need to harness, you know, what we have here in Africa. We have the resources. We have the oil and gas. We have iron ore. We have limestone. We have bauxite. We have copper. We have coal. We have, we have everything. So if you open up Africa, you know, I mean, the sky will be the limit for us. Rule number nine, the African continental free trade area should continue to be smoothened on its edges to make sure that all players consider it fair so that they can abide by it and be able to benefit from it. You know, one of the things that I believe uh, is important and that, you know, uh, needs to be addressed is the issue of dumping. Nigeria is a very important, very big country. We are over 200 million people. We are highly dependent on imports. And if we leave our borders, you know, uh, wide open, you know, the concern is that a lot of these countries that are bordering with Nigeria, some of, you know, which we know are quite small, much smaller than Nigeria, they will be in a position, for example, to be importing a lot of goods from other countries like China and what have you, and be dumping into Nigeria in the guise of CFTA. Rule number 10, when considering where to start a project, it is very critical to scout for all possibilities and figure out the closeness to markets and raw materials included in your critical analysis. Well, the choice of Aqua Ibam is easy because, you know, we, ha we decided on Aqua Ibam because of the feedstock. Because if you have your project, you know, next 
you have fit stock, it is much easier. Meaning that you do not have to transport, you know, your raw material or your fit stock to the project. So we decided Aqua Iban because, you know, um, it is much easier for us. The fit stock is there, and then also it is uh, a location where we'll have a big jetty, meaning that you can bring in products and you can also export products, you know, from that location. And your fit stock is just next door. So we decided on that, and the quality of the crude there is also one of the best, you know, hence the reason why we felt it was, you know, easier for us to actually put that, you know, project in Aqua Ibum so that if we are using the feedstock, it's there. If we decide now to export, you know, we can also use the JT. And if we decide for whatever reason that we have to bring in crude, we also can bring in the crude, you know, to the JT. So in, 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 a, in that case, you really do not have to build a lot of storage, you know, because, you know, you have your feedstock next door. Otherwise, you would have had to build maybe like huge storage facilities for you to be able to bring it in projects if your feed stock is not, is not next to the project. Now, we know one thing for certain on this channel. Abdul Samad would not be the last person to make a lot of money trading commodities on the African continent, especially as our populations keep increasing and especially as we open up our borders with this great idea of the African continental free trade area. A lot of entrepreneurs are going to make money trading commodities across borders and importing and exporting different commodities from the African continent or even from outside the African continent. This is something that African youths should especially open their eyes to as commodities will form the base of every expanding market out there. It is something that we really believe in and it is something that we think will be profiling in the next coming years. New entrepreneurs will be coming from this field. But for now, of course, if you have an African lion or lioness who you want us to profile next, be sure to leave it in the comments below and we'll definitely get to it and figure out a way in which we can profile them next. Until next time, of course, my name is Maro. And do not forget to smash the like button for this video so that as many people as possible can get to be alerted about this content and be able to also draw inspiration from the African lions and the African lionesses who we profile on this channel. Thank you guys and see you next time. But of course, for now, if you have a lion African... Oh, no, 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 no. But of course, for now, if you have an African lion or an African lioness who you want us to profile next in the next series... No, 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 just... Come on, man. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't think as you talk, all right? Just, just keep this thing straight and let it go, all right?